What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Hero vs. Zero Season 5. This is Episode 4, where I have yet again nagged another of my friends who can't seem to escape me. I continually hunt him down and force him to be in these episodes. Why don't you go ahead and uh, let him know who, who my captive is. Hi guys, it's me, Nate. God, please help me. <laughs> I feel like every week, Nate just like... It, it nervously awaits how I'm going to introduce him, and uh, <laughs> I never, I never know what I'm even going to say. But anyways, uh, we are now in week four of Hero vs Zero. This is the pen ultimate challenge. I love that word, so I'm very excited to use it. It's a good um, word. Yeah, it's it's a great word. The the second to last challenge, and the last challenge was Super Meat Boy. And as a reminder, um, you guys had to complete the dark world of the forest, the very first world and um, do so in less than four minutes for uh, the regular difficulty, and then in less than three minutes for the Nate difficulty. And both of us were really impressed with how many people came around for this challenge. Uh, we had been a little bit concerned about participation in some of the previous challenges, but it was, it was insane how intense the competition got for this particular one. So I do want to give a shout out to all the people that participated. I think there were eight or nine of you. There was, there was Nyrock, um, who participated and gave a great attempt. This is actually, you know, Super Meat Boy is a really difficult platformer. And for a lot of people who had just started playing the game recently, because either Nate or I gifted them a copy, or who had never played at all prior to this challenge, they did an excellent job of just getting comfortable with the game, let alone good enough to complete one of these challenges. So, good job Nyrock for participating and making a valiant effort. And then there were a couple people who completed the Nick difficulty. My difficulty. It sounds so weird to say the Nick difficulty. Um, <laughs> so congrats to Leo and Siege of Pancake. I know Siege of Pancake is somebody who had not played the game at all prior to this week. So it's really impressive to be able to do that. And then in, just to complete the challenge is quite the feat. But on top of that, there were six people who completed the Nate difficulty, which is incredible. I was super impressed. And I know Nate was too. Right, Nate? Yes. I was I was blown away. Yeah, because it's the Nate difficulty. Of course, Nate was blown away with so many completions. So <laughs> <laughs> there were also some really interesting, I guess, um, events that happened in some of those runs, and there were quite a few people that hadn't participated in previous challenges that I was happy to see participating in this one. So just to give a shout out, I also I also know that of the people who participated, they all know their relative times, really. So it's not going to be too much of a surprise with the ordering of the uh, participants this time around. But I do want to give a shout out to specifically Risa for her attempt where she completed the Nate difficulty, which in and of itself is impressive. But she also encountered something that was a really rare RNG event where after getting an A-plus rank on one of the levels, there's a super slight chance that, um, I think it's called Meat Ninja, will show up with like a funny phrase or something. And it's hilarious because it's on, you guys can check it out in the description below. I have links to everybody's runs, so do do take a look at them. But yeah, it's really funny because she got caught totally off guard by it. And it's something, I mean, you guys saw, or some of you might have seen, that I have a 106% completion playthrough of this game on my channel. Nate's played this game a ton, Reese has played this game a ton, so many of the other participants have played this and never seen this event happen which is just nuts that it happened in the run that Risa actually completed the challenge for. So that was really cool, and I'll show it on screen now, obviously. There were a couple other people that completed the challenge, though they did not make the top three, and one of those people was one of the newcomers to Hero vs. Zero this season, Beachamp, who has consistently impressed us with uh, his attempts, so thank you to Beachamp. And then, of course, Nate's uh, good old buddy, Tapris, rose from the shadows to assert his platforming skills in this particular <laughs> challenge. I know Tapris, uh, Tapris goes way back in terms of Hero vs. Zero, and it's like every Mega Man challenge, every every platformer really, Tapris comes out of the shadows and is just like, hey, don't forget that I'm really good at platforming, and <laughs> had a really great run <laughs> in Super Meat Boy. So thanks again to Tap for participating and completing the Nate difficulty challenge. And with that, I think it's pretty fair to hop into the top three, who already know who they are. But you know what? Drum roll, let's build up the drama and excitement for, for the sake of it. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. So, in third place, we have Ben, or hey, me, Ben. 
who had an excellent time of 2 minutes and 30 seconds, super lightning speed fast, and overall just had a really clean run. I mean, you're going to find that when you watch a lot of these top runs, they all look relatively similar in that most of the time they're aiming for the same strats, but they have little slip-ups in different spots. And Ben, again, came through really cleanly, uh, building further on previous accomplishments and some of the other challenges. And to get top three in this particular challenge is really quite the feat because of how many people participated, because of how many people beat the Nate difficulty and how good at platforming all of these individuals were. So congrats, Ben, on placing, you know, in the top three again uh, this week. And yeah, I mean, I'll have it playing on screen right now. Again, if you want to check it out, though, uh, feel free to take a look in the description. And then, Nate, you want to take second place? I'll, I'll, I'll get a drum roll I, going for you. Oh, thanks, Nick. Oh, okay, so in second place, we have DNC. DNC hasn't um, attempted many challenges in the past. Um, not that I can remember, at least. Um, so it was really nice to see him attempt this one, especially with all the hype surrounding it and everyone else kind of coming out of the shadows and lots of first timers. It was super fun. Um, he got a really impressive time of 2.25 um, and he went with some safer strats in some levels as well, but despite that still managed to get a super fast, super impressive time. Yeah, it was super clean. Really enjoyed watching it, and it's crazy that even despite, you know, safer routes in, two, in the second and third levels, was able to um, do so well. And then I think it was the auto-scroller level towards the end, I think it was like either 18 or 19, where he took a totally different um, approach to the beginning, so that was interesting to see. And yeah, um, one other thing I guess worth noting is that DNC was one of the first submissions, which is not something we reward point-wise, quantitatively, but is still impressive nonetheless to have gotten such a good run so early on in the week. So, yeah, good stuff, DNC. And then in first place, the, the grand champion of the Super Meat Boy Challenge from Hero vs. Zero Season 5 is none other than Steffo. Steffo had an incredible 2 minute and 22 second long run. Also, Steffo had a couple slight optimizations that no other runs um, were able to show off. Namely, in, I think it's level 4 or 5, Steffo was able to, right from the spawn, kind of drift or, or cling to one of the walls and left to get a wall jump to start off the level with a little bit more speed rather than having to rely on building that speed from running. And overall, Steffo really only had a couple moments, a couple slip-ups that lost a second or two here and there. And, I mean, you'll see with every run that everybody got kind of cautious and won on the last level towards the end where there some optimizations could have been made. But, I mean, yeah, it was really impressive. And something else about all three of these top three runs is that every single one of them got the saw blade, the quick skip, on the 12th level, 1-12x, which is really impressive and it takes a lot to get really consistently. Steffo also had incredible runs throughout the week, was constantly chipping away at his time, and was streaming it as well. So if you do want to see Steffo stream other games, I think Steffo plays a lot of other challenging platformers like Celeste. Um, I know Steffo's played a lot of Crash Bandicoot in the past. Um, his stream will be in the description below, so feel free to check that out. And again, all of these runs will be in the description below. And I guess outside of the top three, I should have mentioned Tapris got a 2 minute and 36 run, uh, B Champ got 2 minutes and 41 seconds, Brisa got 2 minutes and 55 seconds, Leo got 3 minutes and 21 seconds, and Siege of Pancake got 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So again, congrats to everyone who did so well with this challenge. It was really quite impressive. And I guess... One other thing that was really cool about this challenge is that because so many people beat the Nate difficulty, it was a really tight race to see who that top three would be. You know, it was like, it wasn't just about getting less than three minutes, it was about, okay, I have a run of two minutes and 40 seconds, but then somebody else has a run of two minutes and 38 seconds, so then pushing yourself to get an even lower run, etc. Um, there was a lot of competition just to whittle away at even a few seconds in some of these runs. So, yeah, um, thank you guys so much for your, your fervent competition in this challenge. 
And with that, I think, I think we're ready to move on to the overall standings. You got anything more to say about the challenge, Nate? No, I think you just about covered it. Um, but a big plus one to the to the bit about um, how the it focus the focus went from just completing the challenge to the competition and optimizing uh, your runs and you know seeing who could whittle away all the seconds and stuff. It was really cool to see. I think mm -hmm. I think it was like a nice level of difficulty for everyone it seemed. Yeah, I agree. And all right, um, let's talk briefly about the overall standings. So in first place with 13 points, we still have Overlord Risa. And in second place, we have Hey Me Ben with 12 points, only one point away, closing in on Risa's lead. And in third place, we have none other than B Champ himself, who has been in third place for all of the other challenges. So keep up the good work, B Champ. We believe in you and your ability to keep climbing the ranks. And then in fourth place, we have Leo with seven points. Interestingly enough, Leo did not participate in the Smash Challenge and still has seven points and is in fourth place because of their great performance in the Pokemon tournament. So good job with that. And then we actually have a tie for fifth place. Interestingly, we have a tie between Siege of Pancake and Steffo. Steffo, the grand champion of this week for the Super Meat Boy Challenge, earning six points. But Siege of Pancake, having completed the normal difficulty for all three challenges thus far. So it shows kind of two different methods, uh, two different ends of the spectrum in terms of getting points and, you know, climbing those ranks. And then in seventh place, we have another tie between DNC and Nyrock. Similarly, DNC in this particular challenge did really well, but hasn't participated in the other challenges. Whereas Nyrock has completed the first two challenges and then participated in this one, uh, demonstrating another similar... Uh, I guess split there and then in ninth place we have Tapris with three points in 10th place we have Renin with two points and then 11th place we have the doofus himself Alex Bidoofus <laughs> <laughs> love you Alex <laughs> <laughs> so with that uh, things are really tight I do want to stress that there are still two more challenges this challenge and the next challenge after that and in each of those challenges, it's very reasonable to make up a difference of three or four points. So anybody who's really within six to eight points of the first place has a very, very real chance of making it not only to first, but let alone the, you know, the top three, the podium at all. And given that the current third place is at 10 points, that really leaves almost everyone within the running for the top three so i really encourage you guys to continue to participate especially if you like the super meal boy challenge i think you'll i think you'll like what's coming but with that being said should we uh should we get into what's coming let's do it nick oh man so excited all right so for the fourth challenge we are going to be playing panel de pawn Many of you might not know what this game is, however, it's recently become available via Nintendo Switch's online uh, membership, so it's gained some popularity. Many of you might know about Tetris Attack, though, and we'll get into that briefly, but Panel to Pawn is a really cute puzzle game surrounding fairies that are trying to save the world and uh, defeat monsters via solving puzzles. And <laughs> it's a lot of fun, and it's also pretty difficult, and it's very skill-based. Uh, there's obviously some RNG in which blocks show up, but your ability to navigate the patterns, to manipulate the blocks, to set up for combos, to set up for chains of clears is um, really important. And it's a game that I've really enjoyed playing, and it's a game that I feel is underappreciated, and I want other people to try to play and appreciate the skill that can go into doing it really well. And the normal level difficulty, the, the Nick level difficulty, as weird as it sounds, um... <laughs> is to beat the final boss in less than two minutes on normal difficulty. So the story mode, or rather the versus mode, I'll show it on screen maybe, or leave a tutorial in Discord because the game is actually in Japanese. But if you hit one player, which is in English, in the menu there is a versus mode, which is just VS. And if you click on that, that's basically this one player story mode where you'll have to fight through seven or rescue seven of your fairy friends and then fight a few enemies and then there's the final boss Cordelia and that final boss Cordelia is the challenge this time around she's the most difficult opponent in the game and you need to clear 
per level beat her in less than two minutes, and it's kind of all there is to it. It doesn't matter how many continues you've used up until that point, which character you use to try to beat her doesn't matter, um, doesn't really make a difference, and please use Panel to Pwn. Uh, it can be emulated very easily via the SNES emulators. I also looked it up, there are actually browser versions of Panel to Pwn, so it's very accessible if you can just access the internet. Um, you can just literally type in Panel to Pwn browser and the first thing that comes up is very easy to work with. So that's an option as well. Maybe, I don't know if it's, if it's been on the virtual console before, but you can maybe do that. And if absolutely necessary, in that you have a, some sort of grudge against Panel to Pwn, and can't stand looking at the fairies or something like that, you can use Tetris Attack. However, if there's ever a tie or any gray area, the person who uses Panel to Pawn will get the benefit of the doubt. And the reason is, though the gameplay is incredibly similar between the two, and they're mostly visual differences, there is some slight difference in the AI and um, some of the, the times. Um, in terms of how the blocks work and how the, how much they're frozen if you get certain types of combos. So there are slight differences and the intent is to use specifically Panel to Pawn. Panel to Pawn has excellent music too. It's got really cute sprites. The fairies are wonderful. It's a lovely game. You should all try it. So, sorry, Nate, do you want to tell me about the Nate difficulty? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Nate difficulty is pretty much the same challenge, but on hard mode. So more difficult AI and overall a much more difficult challenge. There's really not too much to say. I feel like Nick's covered most of it. It's a relatively straightforward game, super skill based. Um, we're excited to see what people what people do. Yeah, um, hard mode adds an extra block color. And oh, yes. I guess if you're looking for tips, there are tutorial modes in the game itself, which is pretty cool. And yeah, that's about all there is to it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know in the Discord, as usual. Because again, you need to be joining the Discord if you want to participate in Hero vs. Zero. I don't know if I've said that enough, Nate. Do you think so? I don't know. Maybe, maybe one more time? Alright, I can do that. You guys need to join the Discord if you want to participate in Hero vs. Zero. <laughs> nice. Now I think you've said it enough. Okay, okay, good. Um, and again, thank you so much to all of the people that have participated so far. Hopefully you're interested enough in Panel to Pond to at least give it a try. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. But I think that that covers it. So we'll see you guys on Discord and in next week's episode for the final challenge. But until then, this is Moon Knight Zero. And Nate. And this mission is complete.